Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here today with the Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Public Safety and Security, Terrence Reedy, Deputy Secretary Sue Terry, Chief Legal Counsel Paige Scott Reed, Deputy Legal Counsel Adam Hornstein. It's an honor to be joined by our Attorney General, Andrea Campbell, and Senate President Karen Spilka. I also want to recognize members of the Governor's Council, legislative leaders, including members of the Black and Latino Caucus, district attorneys, sheriffs, police chiefs, including Newton Chief John Carmichael, leaders from the legal community, members of the Cannabis Control Commission, Cannabis Advisory Board, and the Cannabis Social Equity Board, cannabis entrepreneurs, including Devin Alexander and Danny Vasquez, community advocates, equity champions, and faith leaders. I'm grateful to everyone who is here today. You represent the deep commitment to justice that runs throughout our state, and your presence is a testament to the significance of what we are going to announce. So I will get right to the point. Today, I am exercising my executive power as governor under the Massachusetts Constitution, subject to approval by the Governor's Council, to pardon all misdemeanor convictions for marijuana possession on record in our state. With this action, Massachusetts will be the first state to take action since President Biden pardoned federal marijuana convictions and called on governors to follow suit. In fact, we believe that this is the most sweeping cannabis pardon ever proposed by any governor in the United States. That's because this pardon will apply to all misdemeanor possession convictions in the state courts. Those eligible number in the hundreds of thousands. Also, and importantly, they will not have to take any action themselves in the vast majority of these cases. We'll simply work with the court system and through the paperwork to update the records. Ultimately, anyone so wishing can receive and request and receive a certificate attesting to their pardon if they choose. The reason we do this is simple. Justice requires it. Massachusetts decriminalized possession for personal use back in 2008, legalized it in 2016. Yet thousands of people are still living with a conviction on their records, a conviction that may be a barrier to jobs, getting housing, even getting an education. For some, it's also simply more than that, a difficult memory, a burden, something they live with every day. All for doing something that isn't even cause for arrest today. That doesn't sit right with me. It's not fair. It's unfinished business. Knowing we have the power to lift that burden, we should do something about it. As Dr. King said, the time is always right to do what is right. So let's do the right thing now. This pardon, we know this pardon will also reduce disparities in our criminal justice system. Surveys show that white, black, and Latino Americans use cannabis at the same rate. Yet black and Latino Americans have been more frequently arrested, charged, and convicted of possession. That's unjust, that's wrong, and we need to address that. We don't have a specific analysis of those impacted by today's measure, but we can be certain that this pardon will redress some of the harm those disparities have caused in Massachusetts. And we'll continue to do all that we can to eliminate racial injustice throughout our systems. And this action today 
is also in the context of other actions that our administration has taken. Clemency has been a priority for our administration. It's why we were the first administration in nearly four decades to issue pardons in our first year. So far, working with the Governor's Council, we've pardoned 13 individuals who long ago paid for their mistakes. We also issued this year clemency guidelines, revised clemency guidelines that call for fairness and compassion and address inequities. To me, justice is about our collective as well as individual accountability. That's what today represents when the governor takes action like this on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's a collective commitment to greater justice, to greater fairness in our system. It requires looking back and righting wrongs. We do this to build more trust as we move forward. That's what we're doing now as a state. We look forward to working with the Governor's Council as they advise and consent and consider this action. I want to conclude by thanking all of those, so many of you here and out there I see, who have long advocated for this kind of justice. I also want to recognize President Biden's leadership. We are proud to answer his call. I'd also like to recognize the many members of our administration and partners across state government who've worked so hard and will continue to work hard to make this intention a reality. It is now my honor to introduce our Senate President, Karen Spilka. Wow, today is a very good day, I believe, for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you, Governor, for inviting me to say a few words. I greatly appreciate it, because I'm really happy for the reason that we are here today. And I want to applaud Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and your administration for taking this critically important step for our Commonwealth residents. We talk endlessly about making Massachusetts more, a more equitable place. Pardoning people convicted of misdemeanor marijuana possession is a tangible and very important step in fulfilling that commitment to our residents. We need to be doing everything we can to make sure that people can be empowered to get jobs, be housed, go to school, to make their lives better and the lives of all of their family members. A misdemeanor cannabis possession charge should simply not, and I emphasize the word not, stand in the way of any of those things. Especially when our black and brown communities who we know have been disproportionately impacted by these policies historically. And it's happened right here in Massachusetts as well. So working hard to tackle these inequities has been a priority for the Senate as well. When the Senate and the House worked together to pass cannabis uh, equity legislation in 2022, we made sure to require an expedited expungement process for people convicted of cannabis-related offenses that are now decriminalized. But I am elated, really elated, that the governor is, by this executive order, expanding on that work to make sure Massachusetts is more equitable as well. It simply is the right thing to do, so thank you. And with that, I would like to introduce our terrific Attorney General, Andrea Campbell. Thank you, Senate President, and of course, thank you to the Governor for your leadership, and, and as well as Lieutenant Governor. Thank you all for being here for this, frankly, historic 
and necessary and important uh, announcement. I applaud Governor Healy's efforts to rectify historic racial disparities, including, of course, with this proposed action. I also want to thank the Biden and Harris administration for their leadership on this issue, for helping, frankly, set this policy in motion by issuing pardons for simple marijuana possession at the federal level. President Biden urged governors to take action in their own states. And once again, Massachusetts is leading the nation as the first state in this country to answer that call. I'm confident that they will take notice of today's announcement and it will inspire other states to follow. Criminal convictions for simple marijuana possession have serious lifelong consequences, making it nearly impossible to secure housing, obtain a job, be afforded educational and other financial opportunities. These consequences are only compounded when you consider that a disproportionate number of those who have been arrested and convicted for marijuana possession are black and brown people. A 2020 ACLU study a report found that in Massachusetts, black people are four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than white residents and white people. And that is not because they engaged more in the possession of marijuana. That same report ranked Massachusetts 18th in the nation for the largest racial disparities in arrests for marijuana possession. Black people have carried the enormous burden of a biased criminal legal system for decades. While these stats are sad and egregious, the Commonwealth, of course, has the ability to do something about it, especially when the possession of marijuana is no longer a crime in our state. Thus, I am extremely proud to stand here with the governor and, of course, the lieutenant governor for actually taking action today to rectify that wrong. These pardons will transform the lives of thousands remove barriers allowing them to live with economic dignity and right past wrong and stigma that these individuals have faced as a result of that record. As Attorney General, I, along with my team, will continue to address injustice, work to close the racial wealth gap, which this action also will contribute to. And of course, this pardon meaningfully moves the Commonwealth in the right direction. We will continue to work with the administration to bring about meaningful legal reform, not only in this context, but also in the context of the Department of Correction and other areas of prison reform. And I'm grateful to have an administration where we can actually work with to be able to get things done. None of us does this work by ourselves, so I too want to thank all of the advocates who are here in this space and those, frankly, who are not here, policymakers, law enforcement, and those with the lived experience for your persistent advocacy over the years for this issue. Thank you. I look forward to working in partnership with each and every one of you. And now I would love to pass it on to our Newton Police Chief, John Carmichael. Thank you all. Good morning. On behalf of the Massachusetts Chiefs of Police Association, my colleagues and I are happy to stand with Governor Healy and her administration in pardoning those whose lives were previously impacted by simple marijuana possession offenses. Governor Healy's pardon provides a fair and impartial response to prior misdemeanor marijuana possession offenses, helping align these past convictions with the current laws of the Commonwealth. I want to note, because it's important, that the so-called war, war on drugs originated back in the 1970s under President Nixon's administration and continued over the following decades. I commend my law enforcement partners for the transformative and collaborative role we now play in mitigating the use of substances in our communities and helping us achieve better police legitimacy. I thank the governor and I thank everyone else. Thank you. I'd like to ask Devin Alexander to come up, Rolling Leaf.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Devin Alexander, and I'm a lifelong resident of Quincy, Massachusetts. I was part of the first cohort of the state social equity program, a program designed by the Cannabis Control Commission to give those who have been impacted by the war on drugs a chance to get their foothold in this billion dollar industry. In 2011, I was 17 years old and a senior in high school. During February vacation, I was arrested, you know, driving with some friends who happened to be white. I was the only black one in the car. I got pulled out of the car because I smelled cannabis and they found me possessing around three grams of cannabis and I was arrested for that. So I had plans of going to the US Air Force, but those plans were quickly derailed due to that arrest. It so, it followed me around, you know, people spoke very negatively about me. I would never do anything in life. I would never go anywhere because of this. Cannabis is still very heavily stigmatized. So it was very good to see that we're finally righting the wrongs that the racist war on drugs has caused so many black and brown communities. We legalized cannabis back in 2016 through question four. And now here we are eight years later finally talking about this. It is way past due and we have a lot of ground to make up. Pardoning for simple possession is great, but it's just the first step. We need to get to a point where we pardon individuals for all cannabis related crimes. I truly believe with all my heart that no individual in any part of the world should be incarcerated for cannabis. And today's announcement is a big step in that process. I look forward to working closely with local nonprofits, the Cannabis Control Commission, and other elected officials to make sure that we remain as one of the top policy leaders for cannabis in the country. Thank you. Now, I'd like to introduce Danny Vasquez. Good morning, everyone. My name is Danny Vasquez, and I too had a trouble pass with marijuana when I was younger. Um, I got into a lot of trouble with the law for possession of marijuana, but I also had an opportunity with great mentors from the Lawrence Boys and Girls Club, most specifically Maureen Kelly, uh, that helped me with support and get, me, get my life back on track, which led me to get a full scholarship at Northeastern University. Okay. I graduated. Uh, so I, I graduated there in 2011. I was also fortunate to have worked and met uh, Ryan Arias, uh, Dominguez, and Mass Cultivate Ed, who helped me uh, seal my record, my juvenile record. Uh, but even before that, um, I avoided applying to certain jobs because I knew that my background would be held against me and I would be automatically disqualified for those jobs. Uh, so. Here I am standing before you about 20 years later and I've managed to finally get my record sealed, um, which is the monkey on my back that I held for so many years. Now to be participating in, the legal uh, in a legal capacity in the cannabis industry is a full circle, for, uh, full circle moment for me and it's really surreal that I'm actually even standing here. Um, but it's not just about me. Uh, today's event is bigger than me. Uh, there are so many people like me who live in the shadows because they have things in their record that would disqualify them from certain jobs. Now that I'm able to work in the cannabis industry with a company called Advanced Cultivators, the first Latino recreational cultivation facility based out of Lower Massachusetts, um, it speaks volumes to the legislature and others in government uh, and what others in government have done specifically here in uh, the great state of Massachusetts. Um, and now I want to pay it forward to, to get other people help and get into the job. If it's in the cannabis industry, great, but if it opens up economic opportunity for all, even better. I'm so glad that the governor's decisions today will have a positive economic effect on all people who will finally get a chance to come out of the shadows, like I was. This is a great step forward, and I appreciate the administration, the administration for its work. They are trailblazers, and they let people like me have a second chance. So thank you. Thank you, Governor. And I'll turn it back over to you now. Thank you. Thank you so much um, to, to Danny and to Devin in particular for sharing their stories and their experience about 
uh, what this is about and, and why it's so, so important. And uh, thank you to, to all of our speakers who participated um, as well. I'm happy to, uh, to take questions. I just want to, uh, again, acknowledge the work of our team, in particular our Deputy Legal Counsel, Adam Hornstein, who under Paige Scott Reed's leadership really uh, steered us through, navigated a lot of this with, uh, within our administration, with the courts and, and, and others. So many thanks. I'm happy to take questions. Well, I think it's pretty good. We're doing it as quickly as we can. I mean, President Biden issued his call. We are the first state to answer that call, and we always like to be first in Massachusetts. As somebody who is both a prosecutor and a civil rights lawyer, um, this is something that is near and dear to me. We worked as quickly as we could to work through these issues. You know, um, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of convictions. So it's a lot to, to sort of think through and to make sure that we are ready and operationalized should uh, the good governor's council uh, agree with our recommendation and, and vote to approve this. Uh, we want it to be ready to actually operationalize because the last thing I want when I do something like this is to have any confusion about what this means. We wanted to be crystal clear with people that once and when governor's council acts on this, it'll be automatic that nobody will have to do anything, that we will work through the records. In the meantime, if you want proof of or certification of your pardon, all you're gonna have to do is fill out a form online, send it into us, and we're gonna send it right back to you so you have that, but you don't even need it. But if you want it, you'll get it. So it was important that we take the time to do that, to work through what we needed to do with the trial courts, probation, um, others, talking to many of the legal advocates too who'd advocated for this to make sure we were doing it in the right way. So I'm proud of the action that we take today and I don't wanna um, understate its importance in terms of what it says about this state's commitment and you heard it from your attorney general you heard it from the senate president who uh, also spoke of the legislature both the senate president the senate and the house's commitment through various pieces of legislation over the last few years to further advance criminal justice reform and address some of the real inequities and disparities that exist. So I just appreciate what everyone is doing. Uh, this is a big deal, certainly a big deal for the hundreds of thousands of people like Danny and Devin who've had to live with the burden, the stigma, and the very real tangible barrier impediment to success in jobs and housing and education and in life. Today, we take the step to, to strip that away. Today's a really good day for Massachusetts. I'll, yeah, I'll go here. And Well, let me just be clear. So expungement's a different process. That's a court process. What pardoning is, and what I like about it, this is just one fell swoop. It's a sweeping blanket pardon, all misdemeanor uh, uh, convictions for uh, possession. That's important with, with no qualifications, okay? And um, it's just a matter of taking time to go through and, and update the records. We'll move as, I know people will work to move as quickly as possible, but to be clear, it would be operational as soon as there is a vote. Um, not, no, I don't think we do, um, not a, not a specific number, but the number is huge. I mean, um, part of it, re remember, th this will go back in perpetuity. So, you know, Chief Carmichael referenced the war on drugs in the 1970s. Um, I mean, we're talking about people who maybe for, for decades who've had to live with this on their, their records. So, um, I'm, I'm really pleased that we're able to do this and, I think that the fact that it's hundreds of thousands of people speaks to just the scope of this, right, and the magnitude of, of this action and, frankly, the magnitude of, of what has been um, not right for so long here for so many in our state. Does this also apply to juvenile cases and convictions? Yes. Yes. It's a blanket. It's a blanket pardon. Yep. Yep. Well, not out of thin air. Um, we do know just, just based on extrapolation of what we've seen um, since 
2008 since 2016. Just to extrapolate, um, we know the number is in the hundreds of thousands. Governor, yeah. Sorry, Chairman, I missed the beginning. Yeah, well, hopefully people want a governor who's willing to evolve, right, and that we all grow with more understanding. Um, I think, <laughs> I mean, but I, I think, <laughs> look, I think we all want to do that as policymakers, right? Um, I think, you know, back when, when things were talked about, I, I was clear, uh, I think maybe when I was running for Attorney General, my concern was about young people in particular and what it would mean in terms of young people's use of, of, uh, of marijuana. And, um, you know, we've seen since then a great deal happen, um, including actions by the voters, actions by the legislature, and uh, most recently actions by the President of the United States. So. I am about fairness and justice and equity, not just in our criminal justice system, but across the board when it comes to government. And we'll continue to look for and find ways and work together collectively, because this is about collective accountability, on the steps we need to take to make things right. Hold on. It's going, to be, it's going to be automatic. In terms of the timeline that is uh, really relevant, what is relevant is when the Governor's Council is able to convene and uh, cast a vote on this. And uh, should, uh, should they vote favorably on this, it will be automatic. Remember, people will not need to do anything. You will be pardoned, and you will have that cleared from your record. Governor, 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 yeah. 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 What you're saying to the Governor's Council, obviously you're not sending the person Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why that's why we act in this way. It's a it's a it's a blanket pardon. It's a power that I get to author uh, to get to um, get to execute as governor, and our legal team will prepare the necessary document and uh, present that to the governor's council, and uh, we look forward to uh, to their consideration. Yeah. What's that? Expungement's not within my power. I got to execute on what I got the power to execute on, which is to pardon. Uh, the expungement power still exists, of course, and that is something through the courts. But in the meantime, um, we saw fit to make sure that we were doing everything we could in terms of ex executing on our executive power, which was to issue what is the country's most sweeping pardon when it comes to cannabis. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'll certainly always look for ways to make our system more fair and more just, but I want to underscore the significance of today's action. First state in the nation to take this sort of sweeping action. This is a blanket pardon for marijuana possession misdemeanors with no exceptions, no qualifications, and no further action required by those who have far too long been stigmatized by this conviction. Thank you again to the leaders and to the community advocates and to all who helped to make today possible. Thank you.